Hi, in this video, I'll walk you through how to write the verbal conclusion to a confidence interval or hypothesis test. In inferential statistics, someone asks a verbal question like, does the majority of voters support building a new library branch? Use alpha equals 0.05 significance level. We do our survey, collect our data, run the hypothesis test, and we end up with a p-value. Suppose p-value equals 0.028. We cannot just come back and tell the person p-values equals 0.028, smaller than alpha, we reject the no hypothesis, thank you, bye. No, that's bad communication. Good communication means people ask us a verbal question, we need to give them a verbal answer. Not just a bunch of math. This is especially true in statistics where the people asking the question, the boss, the customer or client, the government, they tend to be bad at math. Good question also means we need to provide full context in our answer. In statistics, when people come to us with a question, we need time to do data, make calculations, and we don't get back to them for weeks and months. We need to give full context so that I can remember, oh yeah, that's what I was asking you for. Also, when we do statistics, we generalize from a sample to a population. Therefore, even if we do everything correctly by the book, there's always a chance that the answer is wrong. For our example, there's always a chance that our data show the majority of voters support building a new library branch, but in fact, they don't. Because maybe by pure bad luck, when we went out and collected our sample, a lot of the voters that oppose the new library branch somehow did not make it to our sample. So as a result, any conclusion that we draw in inferential statistics must reflect at least some level of uncertainty. Therefore, here are the two rules of writing the conclusion. Number one, the conclusion must reflect the uncertainty in either the confidence interval or the hypothesis test. And number two, the conclusion must be verbal and in context. Now let's apply these rules. First, let's apply it to a confidence interval problem. Let's take this question, adapted from an exercise in the book, Statistics, Art and Science of Learning from Data, by Agresti, Franklin, and Klingenberg. A recent survey of 1,000 American women between the ages of 45 and 64 asked them what medical condition they most feared. Of those sampled, 61% said breast cancer. And showing a 90% confidence interval for the population proportion of women who most feared breast cancer. Suppose you go through all the work and finally arrive at a confidence interval of 0 0.585 to 0.635. 0.585 is the low limit, 0.635 is the upper limit. Number one, what is the uncertainty here? The uncertainty is that we are only 90% confident. We're not 100% confident. That must be in the conclusion somewhere. Number two, what is the context here? First, the population is of women. And second, the proportion that we're calculating is about those who fear breast cancer the most. Both of those should be in the conclusion. Our conclusion should be something like this. We are 90% confident that the proportion of women who most fear breast cancer is between 0.585 and 0.635. Some people changed the decimal number 0.585 to a percent like 58.5%, but that's not necessary. Most teachers and professors don't require that. And I certainly don't. Here's a template you can use. We are blank percent confident that the blank parameter, such as proportion or mean or whatever you're calculating, of blank. And this blank is where the context goes. 
make sure you have the population and the context from the question. And often you can just copy verbatim from the question prompt and then follow that with the result is between blank and blank. Now let's do a hypothesis test. Hypothesis tests get a little more complicated. In a hypothesis test, you start out with a null hypothesis, H0, and an alternative hypothesis, which some people write as HA and other people write as H1. You do all the work, you calculate the p-value, and if p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. Let's take an example. Here's a question adapted from an old AP statistics exam. A large university's housing office thinks that the percentage of graduate students looking for housing on campus may be more than 10%. The housing office decides to survey a random sample of graduate students, and 62 of the 481 respondents say that they are looking for housing on campus. On the basis of the survey data, is there support for the housing office's belief that more than 10% of graduate students are looking for housing on campus? Use a 0.05 significance level. Suppose we run through all the work and we arrive at this result, a p-value of 0.0173. That's less than 0.05, so we reject H0. If you reject H0, then HA or H1 is considered true. Then you write your conclusion saying basically that HA is true. That means Number one, you must know H0 and HA. There's no way you can jump to the conclusion without writing H0 and HA first. And number two, even though the thing you reject or don't reject is H0, if p value is less than alpha or if p value is not less than alpha, right? But the conclusion is written in terms of HA. Now let's write the conclusion. It's different depending on whether you reject H0 or you don't reject H0. If you reject H0, then basically HA is the only surviving hypothesis, is considered true, and you write that conclusion. But if you do not reject H0, then what happens? Neither H0 nor HA is rejected. Both are surviving, therefore both can be true. In terms of HA, that means the only thing we can say is that we couldn't prove HA. And then on top of that, there's uncertainty. Even when we think HA is true, we're not sure about that. We're only as sure about it as we're sure of our sample. So all of these difficulties together, people resolve it by doing this. If you reject H0, then you say, quote, there is sufficient evidence that HA is true. That takes care of the uncertainty. And then if you do not reject H0, then you say, quote, there is not sufficient evidence that HA is true. Same uncertainty is included. We're not saying HA is false, we're not saying HA is true, we're just saying that the data is not sufficient to prove that HA is true. Also notice how all the not go together. P-value not less than alpha, we do not reject H0, and there is not sufficient data. Some people also include the significance level into the verbal conclusion. They would say there is sufficient evidence at 0.05 significance level that H A is true. I don't require that in my class, but some people may. Back to the graduate housing problem. P-value equals 0.0173. We reject H0. So the conclusion starts with there is sufficient evidence that, that what? That H A is true. So just write that verbally in context. The population here are the graduate students, and the parameter is the proportion that look for housing on campus. So put all of that in. There is sufficient evidence that the proportion of graduate students looking for housing on campus 
is more than 10%. You can also just copy verbatim from the question prompt and say, there is sufficient evidence that more than 10% of graduate students are looking for housing on campus. You see that the population of graduate students is in the conclusion. The fact that it's more than 10% looking for housing is in the conclusion, but the word proportion may not be, you know, if you're just copying verbatim from the question prompt, but it's okay because the word proportion is implied in the more than 10%. In summary, for a confidence interval, write your conclusion like this. We are blank percent confident that the blank parameter of blank, and here insert the population and context from the question, maybe just copy verbatim from the prompt, and then followed by the numbers, is between blank and blank. For hypothesis testing, two different situations. If p-value less than alpha and you reject H0, start your conclusion with there is sufficient evidence and optional insert the alpha that. If p-value is not less than alpha and you do not reject H0, start with there is not sufficient evidence that. Either way, you follow with HA verbally and in context. Make sure you include what the population is and what the particular context is about. Again, a lot of times you can probably copy verbatim from the question prompt. Also, instead of saying sufficient evidence, you can say enough evidence or convincing evidence or sufficient data, lots of different phrasing, That's, they're all okay. All right, hope that helps. Any questions? Ask in the comments. Like and share and subscribe for more contents. Thanks for watching. Bye.